Hello everyone, welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. I am your host, Philip Sadiq. I saw the light. The story of Hank Williams, the country mega superstar. What would you call if he was alive today? What would you say? Hmm, big, 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 big. We have an exclusive interview with the actor Tom Hiddleston and the director Mark Abraham. We got a chance to sit down with them, talk about the film, and of course, the question everybody been wanting to know, and Tom gives a brilliant answer to it. And that's about country music. Now, some people are saying, Sadiq, what do you, what do you know about country music? You like country music? Yes, short story. Years ago, as my brother and I were very young, we loved to fish. I still love to fish. He's off doing other, he's saving the world. So anyway, we would watch these fishing programs and there was one particular one that was being from the South. It was the only one shown on the West Coast. And it was, and it was country music and they would have that in the background with the fishing. So that was my first inclusion of country music because I, I like it and it was the fishing so it was like a match made in fishing heaven, so to speak. It was the fishing hole, I think. Then we got to see Roland Martin, Bill Dance, all those cats fishing. So that's enough about me. So we're going to roll right into the interview and the interview is in progress. So gentlemen, how did the film come together? Because Hank Williams is a very complicated character. What influenced you to make the film first? And then why did you choose Tom to star in it? Uh, I wanted to make the film because I was a big fan of country music growing up and then ultimately I learned a lot about Hank Williams through country music and because he's the he's Zeus on Mount Olympus when it comes to country music well, and uh, then the more I read about him I thought it was just an amazingly powerful dramatic and ultimately very sad story that elucidated the human condition it told you a lot about fame it told you a lot about what it meant to be a, a young artist it told you the and uh, as far as casting Tom, uh, that was serendipity. That was the gods opened up and just said, you know what, you two guys should meet. We, we, I saw him in a film and I pursued him through uh, his agents and various people when, uh, after seeing him in this film and I just thought we should meet. And once we met, we, we saw eye to eye and it became a collaboration of two, two men who had a similar vision not so similar that we couldn't make each other better, but yes. so similar that we felt that ultimately we could get to the same destination. Okay. And Tom, what was it about this project that made you say yes? I think I just, I was fascinated by um, Mark's screenplay and the suggestion that, that, uh, that the genius and the power of this man's songs came from um, his own uh, intimate relationships with his mother with his first wife Audrey, with Bobby Jett and with Betty Jean. He was he was a man who sang um, songs about longing and desire um, and and loneliness. They really are all about women. And Mark had drawn together the music and the relationships, and I thought that was a fascinating thing to explore. Now your chemistry with Elizabeth Olsen, it's kind of like a push. Pull, a love and a hate relationship. How did you guys develop that? And as director, how did you, I guess, have them um, put it together so well? Because it's just like two hands clasping together, yeah. but still want to fight to pull each other apart. <laughs> it even, it had to put it so well. Um, the simple truth is we talked about it a lot. We talked about the kind of people they were. They were both so young, Hank and Audrey, when they met. Um, they were trying to make their way in the world and they were both hot-headed and impetuous and, and, um, and sometimes they wanted the same thing and sometimes they wanted very different things and they weren't afraid of making those opinions known to each other. Um, they, I think they loved each other a lot. I think they were unintentionally cruel to each other. And, and they weren't um, evolved in a way that we've come to understand as, as good communicators. You know, I don't think they knew how to get through to each other sometimes in a way that was kind and considerate. Um, they would just bash each other's heads in. <laughs> That's a metaphor, by the way. <laughs> for, for me, um, as Tom said, we, we talked about it a lot. 
Uh, I've had a few experiences with marriage, so I know a little bit about the subject. Uh, I brought that to it. Uh, I tried to uh, bring that into the writing and then ultimately into the discussions. And then what you do is you just, it's it really, it's, I, I, I'm a sports fan. I started as a sports writer. I'm sorry to use a sports metaphor. They get overused. But it's really about creating a, a trust with your teammates. You're, you're, you know, you're just trying to be able to get an instinctive idea that each one is looking after each other. And that means even if you're having a fight, of course they're not having a fight. Of course they're close as they can be because they need to be to trust each other. And then my job was to uh, let the words take over and then create an environment where they could bring their talents. And, you know, and that's what they did. They brought their talent. They brought their, um, they, they brought their passion. They brought their intelligence to the roles. And then, you know, they would look to me as at certain points and go, what do you think? How do you feel about it? Or I would say to them, hey, what about this? But it was all, it's a collaboration. It's a team working together to create an environment and to try to get as much juice out of that orange as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Now, Tom, the physicality of this particular character. Yeah. Because you had to, I mean, the yodeling, the, uh, how, how difficult was that? And what did you do to overcome the challenges of doing that? Or have you yodeled before? No, I, ne <laughs> <laughs> I never had. No, never yodeled before. Um, bizarrely enough, the, the secret to yodeling is all in the commitment. You just have to go for it. Um, and you'll probably get there. At least that's what I found. Um, the more challenging thing, actually, as you, as you, as you discussed the physicality, was, was trying to find a way of of inhabiting his, um, his fragility in a way, which was in, existed in tension with his charisma on stage. So that he was somebody who had, he had spina bifida, he had terrible back pain. He was very um, thin. Um, and I think in physically he was weakening as he got older, especially towards the end. And he was trying to find a way of, um, of inhabiting that without demonstrating it, without, um, without it being uh, mannered or overly, um, overly signified in a way. Um, um, just trying to make it subtle and it kind of came out in different ways in the way he moved and the way, he, the way his rhythm would manifest as he was singing and strumming and playing. Um, so many interesting things to think about. I never quite know quite how it comes together. But uh, somehow you just put it all the ingredients in the recipe and, 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 and when you get on set, if you're lucky, it, it comes together in the right way. Yeah. There's it, a lot of preparation. It, it's, it, yeah. it takes a... You have to be... You don't... You come on set, but unless you've done major preparation, which Tom did five weeks in Nashville studying with Rodney Crowell, singing with him every day, putting in 12 hours a day. Rodney, a very, very famous uh, country musician, as you know, toured with Emmy Lou, won a couple of Grammys last year, written some of the, you know, amazing country songs. You... you you got to put in the time, you know, you know uh, and, and they put in the time, they put in the commitment, he put in the energy. So when he did get up there, he was confident enough to be able to find spontaneous moments, certainly things that he had decided or we had decided needed to be delivered. There were things, you, you got to hit certain beats, but within those beats, there's so much flexibility, and that's where the, that's where the, that's where the, that's where the art is, really. Okay. So what would you like people who attend the film take <laughs> away from the film? Because I took away a lot. I mean, and I one thing you, about the spina bifida, yeah. I'm just assuming, hallucinating here, but couldn't that have been one of the things about his drug use and alcoholism sure. to get out of that pain? Yeah, no absolutely. question. No yeah. question. If you're, if you're someone who's suffered physical pain your whole life and it's been undiagnosed and people have had um, a kind of indifferent attitude towards it, uh, I think you try and escape that pain in whichever way you can. Um, people talk about self-medicating and I think that's what he did um, ultimately I want people who watch the film to come away with um, a reinforced love of his music if they loved it before I hope they love it even more um, I want people to hopefully have a sense of 
of the circumstances out of which that music arose. Um, I hope people connect. I hope people connect to a human story about a young man who was making his way in the world, trying to stay true to himself as an artist, happened to be a genius. Um, I hope they sympathize and I hope it moves them and um, that it is a, it's a moving and diverting two hours traffic of screen time. That's when you make a film, that's all you hope for. It's excellent. It is excellent, really. I mean, it would, yeah, there were scenes in there that touched me profoundly. Thank Seeing you. the pain and going, he's like, I know why he's doing that. You know, so, okay, well, hey. they're giving us the rap, but the one, people are going to ask me the Loki question. You're going to play Loki again? Yes, no, indifferent, I don't know. Here's the thing I'll tell you about that film. Um, I understand where, I understand the curiosity, and I understand people want to know, um, but I, as a, as, a, as a fan myself, someone who loves movies, I don't want to know everything before I go in. So I'm going to keep shtum, and you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs>